I'm Tony Visco. I'm your host here at Artist World. And today we have, uh, we have Jill Vocal that we're going to be talking to. Jill is a painter of uh, psychosymmetry. Why? What's psychosymmetry? My goodness. A whole different way of putting paint on a canvas. Hi, Jill. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. Good. Thanks for having me here. Great. This is fun. Um, Jill, I, I wanted to touch base with you. First of all, before we get into psychosymmetry, because yeah. I know everybody out there is just dying to find out what it's all about. I hope so. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about your background? My background? Um, I have a lot of artists in my family. You do? Yes. Wow. Um, my grandmother, my, my mom's mother was a fabulous painter, uh, traveled all over the world basically. I think the only country she never went to was Brazil. Wow. Uh, she was also an antique dealer, so she would uh, spend time in all different countries picking up things or sending people's back. Uh, different objects back to the Pink House in New Hope, Pennsylvania, where oh. they had this fabulous uh, antique shop. And she did oil paintings, mostly acrylics. I have, I have some of her paintings. Great. Yeah. Did your dad paint too as well? My dad is a painter, painted yeah. acrylics, did yeah. a lot of ships, and like went up to Wisconsin and all along the shore in Maine. And Traditional little, painting? Landscape, um, soil? No, so. he, he did... Um, he does, he loved jazz, so as a matter of oh. fact, his jazz player was just hanging in front of the art center oh, cool. for the whole show last, Good. in the spring show. Good. Uh, so he painted a lot of different so things. So like your mom? My mom was yeah. more um, makeup, designing home, the home. Okay. Um, a lot of creative stuff in your very background. Very creative. Great. So how did you become, so you obviously got into the world of art through your folks. I think so. And... Too. How then did all of this wonderful stuff that you're doing right now, and I use that, that term is, a, is not a derogatory term, people. It's just, it's just a wonderful, uh, it's, I use it for my own work. Uh, I, I know that you do some beautiful work, and I wanted to talk okay. a little bit about how you arrive at that, where you go with that. So how did it all come to be? Well, all I know is I can remember way back in high school, starting with just doing, it wasn't symmetrical work so much, but one of the pieces that might be shown in this uh, broadcast, I started out with symmetrical design and then I just sort of let it go free flowing. Mm -hmm. And that's what um, I started with, um, just sort of symbolic images spread out all over the paper, a lot of color. Um, so for me, I could see lots of things that were meaningful to me, and I think that they were recognizable, symbolic, you know, like little paths going nowhere or, you know, whatever. Um, so they would take you to wherever you wanted to go? No, it really was something that I didn't think about. I just sort yeah. of drew it out mm -hmm. and filled the page, and um, I still have that piece. Um, but well, when you start out doing the work, do you have a plan in mind as to where you want to go? Okay. With psychosymmetry, usually there is no plan. No plan? No. And that's part of the beauty of it. And oh. I think the students like that too, especially the youngs. And even I've had older students who were, had never drawn before, and um, they start with a split page. And sometimes their initial proportional images set out on that page that they can place on themselves with. Sometimes I'll have like a little. Uh, um, shapes of different kinds if they want to use them. I prefer they just start out and whatever they do on one side, they do on the other, and they just watch, they, they sort of um, watch it develop in front of them as they learn to see the spaces between the top and the sides and in between the lines they're drawing. So psychosymmetry, is it a mirror image of itself? In other words, it's basically if you're talking about doing something on the left, exactly the same on the right? You try to. Within, It's not perfection, but you want to see balance. You, you don't want to look balance. at it and see you know, imbalance. Because if it's imbalance, when you start out with your basic uh, structure, it's going to continue to be imbalanced throughout okay. the rest of the drawing. So you start out drawing. You draw a line, a shape, something yes. on the left-hand side. Yep. Repeat that on the right-hand side. Yes. And then from there, you just continue to draw. It's just connecting lines. And connecting lines. Um, you don't have to use, you, you can even just do a little bit on one side. I, I kind of encourage doing maybe the top half mm -hmm. with certain designs, and then they can flip it because it's on a foam board, and they can move the, their, their 
uh, page around their drawing and do something completely different on the other side. So they ha actually have two different drawings when they're done with it. Okay. Because you can flip it. And, and uh, I'm not, I'm not clear on, on, on flipping. I'm thinking of exactly what is on the left-hand side being flipped to the right-hand side. Yes, and you draw it as you go. You don't, you don't do a lot over here and then try and... So you're not talking about literally tracing. You're not There's no tracing. There's no folding of paper. No. Okay, that's my... my no, when no, you no. said flip, no, my no, mind No, 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 because that's the exercise that the, the whole thing so is this about. Is, this, it, this it's is a, a good exercise for your brain. Discipline. Wow. What is that all and about? It, and it does teach you how to see, because you have to stop and look at it. And some people are very good at it, and they just... Wow, that's mm -hmm. great. Plus, that, that might, it would be great for guys like me that are dyslexic. Maybe but we could try But you could do it. Try you something could do like it. that. Yeah. So ultimately, then, yeah. there's, no, there's no planned beginning. Uh, if, if I hear you correctly, there's no planned beginning. And there's no end. This thing can go on and on. I mean, you don't how know do you what know it's going to look like till it's done? Well, the, the, but the point is, you know, when I when I sit down or when a typical artist paints a scene of a of a of, of a few boats in an ocean and in, in, in the shore and so forth, right? There's a there's an ultimate goal in mind. Yes. He wants to accomplish, or she wants to accomplish whatever they're looking at. Right. This this takes that kind of pressure off. The pressure becomes maybe. I mean, I find it ex extremely relaxing. And I think that the students do as well, people who have tried it. Um, there's no pressure to try and make something look like something. Mm -hmm. The goal is balance. The goal is, and if you work on it long enough, if you take enough time, because I've had some people that would try this at home and they yeah. took enough time, then more personal development takes shape in it. And it does, it's not just a geometrical or symmetrical design with lines and shapes. Um, there's more detail put into it that turns it into a much more personal expression. But then where did the, where did the term psychosymmetry Psycho. come from? Um, well, I'll tell you the truth, because I've been doing that kind of design for a long time. Yeah. But back in 2007, I was sitting at a drawing board. Um, it was a tough year in my life. My dad had died. Some other relationships had failed, and um, I just needed to sink myself into something and I had like a 24 by 36 piece of paper I split it down the middle I really didn't know what I was going to do but I just took like plates that I had and I put plate 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 and one round one in the middle and then I just started this process uh -huh. I really didn't I mean I'd done it before so I think it's something I've always done yeah so the psychosymmetry I gotta say, it just kind of, it was a term that kind of, I can't think of anyone else that might have encouraged me with that. Yeah. Because I had people actually discouraging me from that, saying, oh, no, that sounds like it's crazy. Yeah. But, but I was gonna, sh but I looked at this earlier, because psycho is a combining form that, 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 you know, prefix, yeah. right? And it really means the psyche is talking about the human soul, spirit, or mind, the mental or phys uh, psychological structure of a person. And in the Greek, because I love looking at Greek roots, yeah. the root means to breathe or to literally to blow, to breathe out. So, you're so it's a very, death, it's, it's a very spontaneous, yeah. um, unplanned kind of, it's development. It, it is absolutely fascinating because you do it. something. I mean, the end result. Yeah. Is I'm just I'm mesmerized by the end result of this, and and knowing Thank you. I knowing am my too. discipline, <laughs> knowing how I work. Um, well, and I love that kind of work too, and I. Love I know, but it's so different. In, but 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 from my point from my point of view, I yeah. tend to compensate for my shortfalls and my my. I have to overcome some of the things that I go through to get yeah. to the end result. I think yeah. we all have to do that. But interestingly enough, because I'm a, I work in design all the time, uh, I vacillate toward uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, uh, paintings that are that are more lifelike than, than they're realistic, than, uh, realistic yeah. paintings rather than that. I do, but but the bottom line is we're not here to talk about me. We talk we want to talk about you. Um, the work that you're seeing in the background right now is just for me so intricate that that once you get all of the linear work done, and I, I know you probably go from stage to stage, so let's say you, you plan your, your paper out, you, yeah. you put it's across nice in the middle, you do... It's nice to have a few structures and a balanced sort of design, because then what goes inside those shapes doesn't always have to even be exactly the same. 
Mm -hmm. unless what you put inside the shape is going to connect to something else in another shape. Okay. And that's when it becomes important to have those ba that balance there. And I like, to, I like to be able to connect, sort of like weave a line in and throughout it so that it creates more shapes than I'm putting on there. It creates, well, they it create their own of, shapes. It creates a lot of shapes because yeah. basically you have shapes within shapes. Yeah, so they and, create and, their own. And then from that, when you start adding detail, you start seeing that there's more to it than you really, there's, there, oh I just think God. it's fun to see what develops. It's just, you, you can look at yeah. that and you can find all kinds of good stuff inside it. Yeah, and then uh, you can flip it and there's a whole nother story and oh, that's what oh, I man. love. So, so basically, and I know this from a fact, that yeah. generally speaking, the kind of work you do should be able to ha you should be able to hang your work in any direction because it's good design no matter it how is. you look at it. it I is. mean, essentially, you don't have to do it up and down. You nope. can hang it vertically, horizontally. You really can. It doesn't make any difference because I agree. good design is good design. I agree. And if it's if it, even if anybody took a a, a lifelike sh shot and a, of of anything, whether it's a photograph, whether it's a painting, if it's well designed and you look at it abstractly, you can change that around and do yeah. whatever you want with it. So yeah. I know that that's, that's the case. Well, interestingly enough, then once your linear work is all done, because you're going through these stages of getting your linear work done, you can mm -hmm. now have to plan your color work. That's always fun. That's even it must more be, relaxing. It must be, I mean, you know, I, I have to deal with you know, harmony and, and balance of color and, and, and the juxtaposition of color and contrast and value and, mm -hmm. you know, you're dealing with all of this stuff. I mean, you've got a lot of little components that are in each, each of these segments that you've got to play with. Yeah. How do you get it from not being too contrasty so it gets well, so busy that it's not, it's uncomfortable or whatever? I mean, it, it, it's, it works. So what I'm saying is, is that there's harmony to everything that you're working with, or it seems to be anyway. I like, I mean, I started out with sort of a rule in my classes and with myself to use no more than three colors because with those colors, um, they start, the colors connect themselves in the design and create their own design because of the colors, where you place the colors. Mm -hmm. um, and it, and it creates another kind of balance in there altogether that has nothing. So you, you don't, sit down and say, okay, I have a small red dot or small red shape up here. I now have to balance it out with something that's over in this side or? Well, the design, the, you, you know, usually red red the design is developed, is, symmetry, is, is so. drawn so that it's symmetrical. Um, it doesn't, you don't, I don't even hold fast to it all the time. And some of the students, they, they put any color they want. But if the shapes are there and there's some sort of complementary color balance. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always have to be in the same place. I think it looks nice initially to have, and, and I think it helps to have the colors symmetrically drawn, you know, colored Place. in, Place, yeah, and sure. then they, like I said, create their own shape and design. If you put colors here and you sort of follow it down here, or you follow it, you know, a certain direction, it creates a whole nother uh, image. So you, would you would you then take and do with the upper left quadrant first, let's say? No, and I do then, it one. It, 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 it's oh, so always back, back and back forth. And forth. Okay. Always. Yeah. That's very interesting. Well, you know, I listen to you talk about your students, your students. So you obviously teach. I like teaching. You I obviously do. teach. So where do you teach? At the Plymouth Center for the Arts, right now. You do. Yeah. And I've also heard you talk about do you teach adults and children? Yes. Okay, so how does it differ? Do adults get this better than children, or do children, not always, are children not always. more adaptable to because it? Because I have had adults in, in my class, several adults, who had never drawn before. Mm -hmm. They had never drawn. They'd painted, they maybe did you know, something else in their life, but um, they thought it was gonna be a challenge to tackle it. And they came out with a very creative design. I, can't, I honestly can't say I've ever seen one design that was bad. That was that was like unworkable. No kidding. Not, not one design. No matter wow. how, you know. There of course there's different levels and layers of yeah. um, skill, but I've never seen a bad one. Because one of the things is, and I was saying, to showing somebody this the other day, um, I had a student whose design was not. It was sort of like spindly and sort of, you know, it wasn't uh, clean and beautifully put together. It was balanced to the best of her ability. Mm -hmm. 
But then one of the things I do in the class is I make copies of their design and they color those designs and they connect them. And when you start to connect your, your original design over and over again, side to side or lengthwise, it takes on a whole nother sort of appeal. Oh, it looks like, I mean, it could be wallpaper, it could be yeah, yeah, material, no, no. fabric, that, it could a, be a lot of different things. Yeah, interesting. So yeah. in order to help them along, actually force them to even see a little bit more about what they, their potential they can be. They appreciated it more. It, 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 it's pushing, they push the envelope, but you yeah. help them push the envelope by making copies and then why don't you place this over here and place this over here or whatever yeah. and see what happens. And then in the last Very. class, we, we, I make copies for them. They have their black and white original um, or they can color it. Depends on how much time we have for one class. But, um, and then they'll take their black, another uh, copies and cut them up. This is what we did the last class. They mm -hmm. will chop their other designs up into other pieces like puzzle parts or mm -hmm. something and mm -hmm. reconfigure it into a whole new design. And they did that, and it was very cool. How cool, yeah. Yeah, that, it's a that, lot that of fun. Be, I love better, to do that. I do that better. all the time. As an artist, um, you're obviously doing, you, you do work and you show your work, I, I would imagine, as well as all of us, yeah. both at the Plymouth Guild and maybe some other places. Do you, um, I don't really get out there too much. Yeah, Where but, have I shown it? Um, I'd like to get out more and, and get it out to other art, maybe art associations, or I, yeah. I think, I, what did I have it in? I, I went to the uh, Bourne Library once, Carol okay. Raymond asked me to go there, sure. and, and I did a demo there, and that, that saw what they did, that was fun. Oh, at the Bourne, that's the, what is it, the William Bourne, yep. Bourne Art Association? Yeah, they like that. I'll bet, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool stuff. I mean, I like I said, I, I, I took a look at a lot of the work that you're doing and I just I'm intrigued by the discipline that it takes because I I absolutely my mind won't allow me to go that down that road um, but I admire the you know how do I want to say this it's almost stained glass like I in, would love in, to do stained and glass and it's absolutely beautiful it, it, it would make these things would make great stained glass I pieces. hear that all the time and and I didn't <laughs> know lot. whether or not you know stained glass influenced the work that you do, um, but they certainly are adaptable to stained glass. I always loved my grandmother being an uh, antique dealer. I mean, I, I always loved she'd show things from Persia, when Persia was still oh, Persia. Yeah. Persian rugs, yeah. um, per, different kinds of jewelry and stuff yeah. that was just embedded. Um, What's this kind of uh, Closet, uh, closet kind of beads and things? Well, like that, that too, I suppose. Yeah, 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 but just, just, I, I love colorful, uh, even floors, you know, Elements, and things like that. Elements, parking, yeah, yeah. All, that, all that kind of stuff. Well, I, yeah. like I said, I, I can see this in a lot of applications, commercial applications. Like I said, I mean, stained glass work would go very well. I can see yeah. this in as a design for a business, flooring designs and so forth. Just, I'd love to make works. fabrics, but I've just never tried it. You know, it's kind yeah. of nice things. Well, maybe, maybe what you do is take your designs and sell them to a, fa a manufacturer and allow them to make the fabric. You know, yeah, I mean, I know. it may be I another possibility, gotta, but, but I, you know, the, the, so, so you do show down at the Plymouth Guild, yeah. or I call it the Plymouth Guild, but it's a Plymouth, Plymouth Center, for, Center the arts. for the Arts. I guess the Guild no longer exists as a Guild. Uh, but and the I Center was recently the at the Pine Hills too, and there were 14 people, women there, that did a yeah. um, demo there. And they did, when I do a demo, I can't do the ordinary demo because it takes time for it to develop. And even, I mean, I've, it takes time for any demo uh, painting to develop sure, too, when you're doing it in front of an audience. Sure. But um, I usually bring in, they do their own. I just give them each a, a, a small piece to start on and every single person there did, is, created their own psychosymmetry. Um, it needed further development. I hope I can go back there again, but um, I think they enjoyed it. Well, you know what? <laughs> That's an interesting, interesting because demos generally do take some time to do and most demos, I don't know a lot of artists that will complete a painting within the two time or three hours, element, if you, especially hours. if you're talking about what you're doing. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tough discipline. If you're just painting and not speaking and not explaining, yes, I can understand somebody can probably in a couple of hours yeah. get something done. But as yeah. someone goes through, and I'm sure that when you go through and you demo this, you're, you're doing this linearly. You're doing it line by line and you're doing it. Uh, and it doesn't really, it doesn't always get exciting right away, you know? Yeah. And I try to tell, remind people, you have to let it develop. You have to let it develop more for it to really be 
uh, original, be uniquely yours. Well, you know, I think that's true of all art. You yeah, know, I think we all it tend, is true. We, we all tend to rush it. You know, we. It's very interesting, and I'm sure your students may have the same maybe frustration levels sometimes when they get there because they look at your work and they say, well, I, I don't know, I'm nowhere near that qualified or that capable. And, and stuff takes time. I mean, you must yeah. put your time in if you want to develop it. Yeah. And I think, how can you, how can any student expect to be as accomplished as somebody that's put 20 years or 30 years or 40 years behind something. Yeah, and it, some of the designs that they're, they're looking at took me a couple of months. Well, you know, or hours and hours a day. You know, how many. are the kids? I mean, you're teaching kids. I mean, I, you get involved in summer camps? With I'm the, doing three summer camps. Summer camps I did the June right summer now. camp at the end of June. There's another one in a couple of weeks at the end so of what July. So it's like a six week There's run? going to be 17 or? students in July, and then August is another summer camp. So it's like a full week. Each month is a different summer camp, roughly? Different group of kids. Group of kids. Some of the kids come back again we've had um, yeah they love it I uh, bet and there's different teachers so they have a chance to try a little of my class and then they do watercolor and they'll do you know drawing or uh, clay or you uh -huh. know they'll go out on walk and walk down and sketch on the waterfront or something so there's a I nice to, a nice variety in I have to believe that the kids have got to be much less inhibited they got to be much freer. Oh, they're all friends by the end of the week. They, they're all pals I mean, and I, having fun. I, I would think that I know adults. As we get older, we have we we get set in our ways, and we we need things to be uh, sort of held within a box and, and defined specifically. But I would imagine kids are easily uh, any kind of art. The, this the kind that you work with, the kind that I work with, the kind that maybe you mentioned Carol Raymond, any, any kind of art. I think there's a satisfaction with this kind of art for someone that's not used to drawing. Um, like I had a student last summer, he came back this summer and I could see the development of his skills like was like much faster, cleaner, even, you know, I mean he really could see better. When you say because um, of the, the drawing, the drawing skill level. In other words, we that learned to draw um, years ago learned uh, to draw with discipline. Um, you know, if you're learning to draw the figure, you learn the bones and you learn right. the structure and you learn the. In the same way with building, which is what I need to learn and so more forth. about. Yeah. So that's a little bit more difficult than what you're saying. Putting down linear work. It just, just abstract Well, it's designs. more difficult. Abstract, I think, is, uh, you know, I don't know if it's easier, but it's freer. So there's not a, the, the rules are different. The, I think, like you said, balance of shapes and colors and, I mean. But I've seen, the, ab, I mean, this, this kind of work here is very, from my perspective, disciplined in that, that it's, it's, it's controlled with line, lines. You're staying within the lines. A lot of abstract is just arbitrarily outside, they break yeah. all kinds of rules, uh, and some of it very nicely done. Beautiful. Some of it very nicely done. But yeah. the point is, unless you know how to break the rules, I don't think you can do it. You know, I, I, I don't know if you can do it correctly. I shouldn't say I don't think you can. I should, I, from my perspective, I think you have to learn the discipline of rules before you mm. can break those rules. How do you learn the rules? Well, there are, <laughs> there, are rules that, there are rules that, I mean, you have rules when you're working with this. The you rule know is basically what you, you do here, you do here, yeah, and it is a, a you focus. Have you have to you focus on it. You have a rule of symmetry it. that takes place when you're working. Let's talk a little bit about your sort of your movement through your time, because you didn't just start this. You, you must have graduated into this at some point. <clears> I mean, did you start off doing A lot of people symmetry? say, oh, they mention like Peter Max or somebody. Uh, I mean, my favorite artists are like M.C. Escher. Or, they're not even, you know, they're not artists like this. Mm -hmm. um, Georgia O'Keeffe. I mean, I, I love, I find this freeing because I'm not worrying about making glass look like glass. or But I want to learn more about light and, and well, contrast and all those things. Why, why and can't that you, can be brought into this. Th but this is interesting. You're talking about this as relaxing and free. It is. Why couldn't you take um, a, a, a structure like a plant and then take the leaves and, and within each leaf pattern do, it, do this kind of stuff? Absolutely. Well, you can. Yeah. I mean, you're dealing with, it's very interesting because you're dealing with a very controlled discipline from my perspective. Um, you're doing some brilliant things to get 
a, a balance of color and light and design in, 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 in the Christmas of the work. Uh, and I, like I said, from my perspective, it, you, you could, it's just easily adaptable to stained glass, and it would be wonderful to do. Yeah. But I, it would be interesting to just push that envelope a little bit more uh, in that you could probably take literally any given, any given design, any given scene, and do this and hide that scene within within what you're doing. I mean, yes. I, I could see some really And I will do that. I mean, there's so much room for expansion and, and oh, it's different. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah, what can be and doing. I think people want to see more art. I, I'd like to add more personal. I mean, it's this is personal to me, but I want it to be appreciative, appreciated and sort of um, emotionally I want people to be drawn to it for themselves as well, because I think that's the kind of art that sells. That's what I see that sells at the art center is work where it's nostalgic or it's um, it, it, it evokes an emotion. And well, I don't, I'm not sure that mine does that. It, it does for me because I. Well, of course it does. I think I think that any art art tells a story. Yeah. It it talks to you. It speaks to you. And if it doesn't, it has no business in your life. I yeah. mean, the bottom, if you, and this is true, I mean, we all can walk through a gallery, and every one of us, you can get 20 artists that are in there, and every yeah. one of the pieces that are hanging, if there's 100 pieces that are hanging there, they're all we, great. But, but, but we individually will be drawn to certain, yeah. certain uh, components of one piece of art as True. opposed to something else. True. And it doesn't mean it's good or bad. It just simply means what, we draw, what we're drawn to. Well, you would add, if I can just, I don't want to skip over this because a lot of people still don't really know what psychosymmetry is. I'm not sure I do. I think I found that name, I don't know, I think God gave it to me. Okay. Because I feel like it was originally just a way for me to look at what I'm doing and say, well, I'm, it's spontaneous art. Uh, it's symmetrical and balanced, and it's coming from somewhere inside of my psyche or my imagination or my what I've collected mm -hmm. in my you know uh, group of you know my experience you know from but what I've seen and what I've felt or whatever, and it's coming out. So it's really therapy um, for you. I think it's very therapeutic, very therapeutic, it's and it's good, and it's very healthy m m mentally as well for your brain. I, I think it I, is. I, I should be doing a lot more of it. Well, <laughs> really. Well, it sounds like you're actively involved in teaching adults and teaching kids and it's working fun. and working with yourself. I love yourself. to do so, that. Yeah. And you're developing work. I mean, there's work that's being shown as we speak right now, so that the audience can see it. If somebody wanted to get a hold of Jill Volker, the best place would be through the art center, I would suspect. Probably through the art center. Um, I mean, I do have a, I do have cards with my email, my uh, Gmail. I don't have a website. I, um, I have a Facebook page that has my art on it. Well, this will air uh, yeah. sometime. I mean, it's, it, when it does air, and people that are interested in in, uh, in talking to you about maybe uh, attending your class, and I yeah. think that it would I be would love it. Ad advisable to do. I think that, that you you offer an awful lot, Thank and you. if you can get uh, anybody for me, guys like me, to stay within the lines and do this kind of work, I'll tell you. Are you going to take the class and I try it? I think gold, and I think I probably <laughs> should. I don't know if I could handle it. You, you know, would be uh, able but, to, but though. That's very, the beauty of it. It's a very interesting art form, from my perspective. I can say that if you are interested in talking to Jill about the work that she does and uh, the classes that she does, please call the Plymouth Center. Yeah. Uh, and cool. uh, they're located, they're on what is it? 11, on North, North, Street. 11 North Street. I keep forgetting that. I should know it. I'm part of the Russell Gallery. It's a historic Russell street. Gallery. I know, it's the historic <laughs> street. Um, and I uh, just want to go back and say that my name is Tony Visco, your host for this uh, wonderful event that we're doing all the time, and you can reach me. Uh, at, uh, on my website, uh, at, you can go to my website, it's www.panthonyvisco.com. Uh, you can call me at, uh, uh, through the Plymouth, again, center, because I also teach down there. So, uh, and uh, you can also uh, Facebook me, I'm, I'm on Facebook. So with that, until we meet again, Chilvoka, thanks you for coming Thank you. and talking with us. Thank you.